Hi students, in previous video we already discussed the classification of bearing and the requirement of bearing and different types of bearing and within that discussion there is one thing was missing that is the explanation for sliding conduct bearing. In previous video we already explained the rolling conduct bearing that means there is a relative rolling movement between the shaft and the support. It works because of the rolling elements such as cylinders, spheres between the shaft and the housing. But in this case, these types of bearing, we have sliding movement rather than the rolling action between the shaft and the housing. So that's the difference. So based on the nature of contact, these kind of bearings are fall under the category sliding contact bearing. That means sliding takes place between the fixed and moving element of bearing. And it's also known as plane bearing. The fixed element means the bearing housing itself. The moving element means the shaft. And these kind of bearings are popularly commonly known as the journal bearing. Remember the term journal refers to the shaft itself. That means the portion of the shaft within this housing what we call the journal. So remember whenever I am using the term journal I mean the shaft itself. You could see the shaft is accommodate within the cavity of a bearing with a clearance that means the diameter of the shaft is bit lesser than that of the diameter of that bearing cavity and in between cavity there is a clearance and the clearance is filled with any kind of lubricant in most of the case this will be a viscous liquid lubricant and we have an oil inlet through you can continuously supply an oil a lubricating oil and this is a bit good diagram for that a three dimensional diagram for the bearing and the bearing is as simple as this thing a housing and you can support that housing anywhere you want and there will be a cavity and within that cavity you can support the journal or the shaft here you could see there is no spheres cylinders or any kind of rollers between the housing and the shaft that means sliding takes place rather than the rolling action so there will be slight sliding movement between the shaft and the housing hence the name sliding contact bearing so journal bearings are a perfect example for sliding contact bearing these are the major three different types of sliding contact bearing. You could see this is the 360 degree bearing. That means we have a 360 degree all around support for that shaft. It's a second one is a partial journal bearing 120 degree support only. And third kind is a partial 120 but it is fitted bearing. That means the diameter of the shaft is bit larger than that of the diameter of that support. And we are moving on to the classification of journal bearing. How journal bearing, so sliding contact bearings are classified. The first category is hydrodynamic bearing. And the second one, hydrostatic bearing. And the third one, thin film lubrication bearing. And the last, zero film lub lubrication. We will discuss each of this classification one by one. So the first classification is hydrodynamic bearing. It is a lubricated general bearing that use fluid, liquid or gas lubricant to separate the moving surface completely without an external pressure supply. The required pressure to support journal inside the bearing is generated from wedging action inside the journal. Look at this diagram. The white 
circular thing is actually representing the journal or the shaft and the blue circle represent the bearing cavity and this blue shade is actually the lubricant within the cavity here we have a shaft a clearance and clearance is filled with this blue liquid lubricant and this is the working principle behind any journal bearing okay, look at the first diagram the first situation it's a static condition at least before you turning on the switch or before you turning on the engine the shaft will be in static situation and as you know the diameter of the shaft is little smaller than that of the cavity there will be an eccentricity between the center of shaft and the center of the cavity so due to that eccentricity the shaft will touches the bottom side of this cavity so when i turn on the motor or the turn on the engine the shaft begins to rotate so at the initial condition the shaft will be touching on the bottom line and after we turned on the engine the shaft begins to rotate so while it rotating it will move along the bottom side so at the beginning there will be contact between this loaded shaft and the cavity and gradually when it moves this liquid this viscous lubricating liquid will squeezes between the shaft and the cavity and gradually after some time after a course of time maybe some fraction of second the squeezing action will continue between the shaft and the cavity so due through that clearance we will be getting a continuous squeezing of that blue lubricant in this picture and after some time the liquid will build a pressure through that cavity due to this squeezing this action is known as the wedging action so this is what the wedging action in hydro dynamic bearing so that's why it is hydrodynamic it is continuously changing you could see on the third figure this is what the pressure distribution of a hydrodynamic bearing it is slowly built the pressure and after some time the shaft will lift from the bottom end and you could see then after the shaft can easily rotate within the cavity without touching the bottom side that means at initial position your shaft will be having certain amount of sliding friction and after time t the friction will reduce and this is the working principle of a common journal bearing and these pictures actually explain that uh, in bit good manner you could see the shaft and there is an eccentricity between the shaft and the cavity the main reason of this wedging action is that eccentricity as a design perspective the eccentricity has a vital role in producing wedging action so this is how it works while the moving shaft it will squeeze the liquid within the cavity and after some time the shaft will rotate rapidly and hydrodynamic lubricant will build pressure in th inside the shaft and the shaft will lift up and these are some factor that you should remember while designing a common journal bearing so this is what the journal the portion of shaft within that housing and the diameter of the journal and here is one more thing the edge minimum that is the minimum thickness of layer that a bearing should 
produce to make this uh, separation and this is the pressure distribution of journal bearing over a projected area and these are the factors that you should remember minimum film thickness the clearance mean radial clearance means radius of journal will be subtracted from the radius of that cavity and e is the eccentricity by determining these factors we can design the journal bearing and i will explain the whole design procedure in coming up videos and these are the second classification of bearing that is hydrostatic previous one was hydrodynamic and this kind of journal bearings are hydrostatic bearing it also known as externally pressurized lubrication in which the pressurized lubricant pumped into the clearance of bearing and journal hence it can support high loads even at stationary condition with very low starting friction resulting very low tear and wear but they are very expensive so the main difference between the previous hydrodynamic and this hydrostatic bearing is in previous case the pressure within the cavity is actually built by an internal reaction what we called the wedging but in this case we have same kind of geometry but a pump is connect externally and through that pump we actually pumping a pressurized lubricant within the cavity that means we can build a required pressure through an external power supply supply so that's the difference between hydrostatic and hydrodynamic so the advantage of this kind of bearing is you can have the pressure whatever you want before you turn on the shaft in previous case at the beginning the shaft was actually touching the bottom end and due to that while you turn on the motor there will be a sliding and due to that sliding friction there will be a huge sound while you turning on that motor but in this case you can turn on the pump and can you can lift the thing as, as per your requirement and then after you can turn on the shaft so there will be no initial friction in this kind of bearing and by using some electronic circuit you can even control the pressure within the cavity whenever there is no load in the shaft you can reduce the pressure when you add extra loads over the shaft you can increase the pressure pump pressure of that pump and you can lift to more load so there is a huge span of load control for this kind of hydrostatic bearing but the construction is very complex and it's very expensive we are not using this kind of bearing for the small scale applications and it will produce more precise and accurate rotation rather than the previous hydrodynamic bearing and uh, two other kind of sliding contact bearing are lefting behind that is thin film lubrication and zero film lubrication these are very common type thin film lubrication means there will be a thin layer of lubricant between the cavity and the shaft and these are for the very small kind of application and zero film lubrication in certain kind of plastic bearing we will not apply any kind of bearing and simple any kind of lubricant and simply supporting the shaft by the bearing housing these are the two different category the major classification is hydrodynamic and hydrostatic and we are ending this presentation with uh, this comparison what is the difference between hydrodynamic bearing and a hydrostatic bearing as that name indicate for hydrodynamic bearing the pressure is varying and there is no external pressure supply but in hydrostatic the pressure is constant the pressure is set by the external pressurizing pump and there will be some external pressure supply this is the major difference 
and the second one is a gradual pressure development due to wedging action and in hydrostatic it's a constant pressure and there is no gradual increase or decrease and the third category is high initial friction and we already discussed discuss that at the beginning the shaft will touches the bottom end and after turning on the motor the shaft begins to rotate and build the pressure through that wedging action and for hydrostatic there will be no initial friction because we turned on the pump we increase the pressure as per the requirement and there is no reason for initial friction and the fourth point limited span of load carrying capacity because the wedging action is very limited and it will depends upon the diameter of the shaft and speed of the shaft etc and it is limited you can use it for a limited span but for hydrostatic the range of load carrying capacity is very vast because you can electronically control the pressure within the cavity you can have a very low pressure and you can have a very high pressure so just because of that we will be getting a high range of load carrying capacity for this kind of bearing and one more thing i can add with that it can actually automatically adjust with the load whenever the load is increasing it can sense the required pressure and it can automatically increase the pressure by controlling the external pump and the last one for hydrodynamic the common journal this construction is very simple and it's very low cost and it's economical in fact but in hydrostatic bearing the construction is very complex you need a perfect sealing raises and all kind of hydro controlling systems and obviously it's bit coster than hydrodynamics okay these are the comparison you could have more points when you can refer any other textbooks and i will be putting the link to download this presentation you can download my ppt and go ahead with your studies okay see you in next video